Right guys, so this is a look at my Plex setup. So for people who don't know what Plex is, Plex is a media library program which you can get on various different platforms from PCs to Macs. You can run it locally on your own computer or on servers or NAS devices. So NAS is like a mini server, stands for network attached storage. Um, and that's what I have. So mine is built upon my Synology server. I have a Synology DS918 Plus, which sits at a completely different location to where I am at the moment. It's hardwired into the network, and I can access all my media, as in videos, films, photos, um, from anywhere in the world. I can access it on a web browser, on various different apps, so on my iPhone, my Apple TV's got it, and it all points towards my Plex server. And then from the Plex server, the Plex server will then transcode anything it wants to transfer over the internet into a more compatible version for streaming capabilities so thankfully i have a fiber connection at my home which gives me 20 megabytes upload uh, which is more than enough um, upload speed for a nice decent 1080p stream um, so what i'm going to do is show you the setup i have so this is my synology network this is my remote access just going to sign in and as I say I'm in a completely different place I'm about a mile away from where I actually live um, and my mom's at the moment recording this so you know it has quite a decent length to go to and now uh, this Synology server just to give you a bit of a, a breakdown as I say sits um, at home all day every day and uh, I'll just show you where we're at so it's been on for 25 days um, no problems whatsoever I say it's the Synology DS918 Plus. It's a fantastic, fantastic bit of kit. It's got an Intel Celeron. Um, so with NASes, you don't tend to get massively powerful processors like Intel Core i7s and stuff like that because they are optimized a lot better than they are on Windows. So it's running on a version of Linux, which is obviously being customized by Synology. Um, and as I say, this is the NAS of my choice. It was a replacement. Um, from an aging one which wasn't very good at transcoding so the transcoder is a very important piece of the puzzle for me because to get it over the internet in a nice picture the transcoder will do that in such a way where it's you know packaged down into a nice sizable bytes sent over the internet and rebuilt at the other end very well that's how netflix works that's how youtube works um so obviously it needs a lot of power so on my Plex server, you can there's different settings you can ask for, um, and I've got mine onto what's called make my CPU hertz, which is really um, transcode when it needs to. So this is the back end of the Plex server. So I say the Plex is is an app, so you won't find it on the App Store. So Synology's own App Store doesn't have Plex on it. You get it via third parties. If we go to multimedia here. Um, Obviously, I've got it now because I've installed it, but you actually find Plex on there. To get it, you have to go to uh, Plex itself. And then you go on to Downloads. Uh, obviously, a media server. And then this is where you would obviously select. So NAS, and you've got all the different vendors. So the big boys like Synology, Netgear, QNA. Obviously, mine's Synology. You download the package. And on Synology, you go into Manual Install. And then you would obviously upload it to the server, and away you go. Once you've obviously configured everything you need to configure, it is then an app. So to get it to work well, you need to open some ports, um, but it's fairly simple to do. Once you've set up your network, so you need to know a bit, a little bit about networking to get it to go. But thankfully, I do, um, and that's where this is. So on my network, I've currently got about eight terabytes left. Let's have a quick look. So yeah, I've got a 10 terabyte RAID array, uh, and I've got 4.3 terabytes left. So nice amount of storage. I do have a lot of uh, data. My films will take up the most data, but I also have you know YouTube videos I've downloaded from YouTube, like the memory site. Like I love File Army, so I've got <laughs> hundreds of those on there as well. Um, and we're going to dive straight in. So let's have a look. Cool. So. Straight away, this is what it looks like on the web interface. Obviously, different apps will look differently on different devices. Um, but this is what it looks like on the web interface. It does look very similar um, to what it looks like on the phone. But anyway, we can see 
so uh, you've got different things here so here is where you would select so if you've got multiple plex servers onto your account um, this is where you'd see on the left hand side and obviously you can name them different things so mine i've only got one uh, obviously called danny's network and so that's what my technology nas is called um, and what we can see just from the dashboard is a various uh, different things so we can see continue watching so stuff i've watched recently um, on the deck so things like i've watched paused and then not come back to so you can see progress bars here will show you where you're at so you can see i've nearly finished here but i've just started there recently added videos so obviously with my the way i've designed my settings on the plex is when it basically looks at certain folders on my nas and whenever new content is put into that folder it will then recatalog add it in and get the met metadata for it get the thumbnail for it and make it available to watch it doesn't do any optimization it just plays it in its raw format now a lot of the films I get are either burnt on from like a Blu-ray copy and a lot of stuff I've also bought from iTunes as well so that's also been imported. So I also download music videos so The State of Trance by Armin, fantastic DJ, check him out um, and there's loads of different things, I've got TV as well. So on the left here we can see the library so this is where things get interesting so we can go into films and then boom it's going to load all my latest films, it does it in order that you've added them. But again, you can sort them in any way you want. You can do list view, summary view. So if we go summary view, it gives you a bit of a uh, detailed look at the kind of summary. Group views where we leave it. You can then play, add to a queue, optimize, synchronize, add to playlist, shuffle, play. You can then sort as well by the various things. So we can go by year. And it just does it straight away. But like I said, I like to keep it on date added normally because then I know where I'm at. Funny YouTube videos, so again, I've got nothing at the moment, um, but that's going to be where I put my Fail Army videos. So like music videos, when as soon as I add them in, it kind of goes, and the same with films. TV programs work absolutely fine, uh, and films work absolutely fine. So I'm not sure why the uh, that one's not working, because uh, they are just MP4s. But anywho, that's how that's set up. Now, if we go over to here, status. Uh, we can see that this is currently being played in another uh, account in the house if somebody's watching this on a Mac. Um, I can then see sync. So what you can do is obviously here are the different people's devices that look at my Plex server. So if you didn't want to stream films because of your like a data limit, for example, you can have it synchronized to the so once you're on Wi-Fi, you can then sync the film across so it goes locally onto your you know obviously into your storage and then you haven't got to worry about using data conversions there's no conversions i don't need any optimization because i've got a fast enough connection to do it so this is where we can get into the settings obviously this is then categorized into different versions but the server is where you want to be at so we can see here it's signed in as me I check for update so it's always good to have your server on the latest up-to-date firmware um, so if there's any bugs anything like that gets picked up and sorted um, and obviously all these you can set up all you want remote access is absolutely fine um, internet upload speed I've set at 20 because that's what the speed test told me I had that's what I know I had there's no problems there optimized version so there is a couple I've got optimized because they're the ones I watch frequently um, and I've got them in different versions like one for Apple TV one for mobile and it's just optimized that little bit better so you get a little bit experience better experience when you're streaming it over the web library so this is the one you want so update library automatically when changes to the library folders are detected and if you don't have this on it will automatically do it but it's obviously in set intervals um at scheduled tasks so you can have it once a week stuff like that so if you've got a nas which hasn't got necessarily the power for it that's when you can have it but mine's done on automatically um and yeah it's pretty cool now, network, obviously you can set loads of different things. Now, Transcoder, again, I've got mine on the, the highest setting, which is make my CPU hurt, because I know it's got the power to do it. I've got plenty of fans, plenty of speed to get the air out, so I know it's no problems there. Or you can have an automatic, so let Plex determine how, how much it wants to transcode and how much you know leeway you've got on your processor there, kind of the balance. Uh, or you've got higher speed, higher quality you take your pick um, all these other settings are a bit more advanced so if you know what you're doing 
you carry on. If you don't, I'd leave it alone. Uh, Deal and Ang, so you can have it played locally. So, for example, when I'm at my other house, where my NAS is, instead of it going over the internet to get the device, it will then talk to the local network and just pull it off that way instead. So it's less strain, it's a lot quicker as well. Scheduled tasks. Obviously you can see a lot's ticks, but it just kind of looks after the back end. Bit of house cleaning in the background for Plex, what it generates over the time that you watch it. Uh, extras, so you can allow things like cinema trailers to be played, so it uses third party programs built in and allows you to watch trailers. And obviously when you press play, it will obviously grab that trailer from another source. Um, and there's loads of different things you can add on, so it's really cool. This is quite new um, in terms of bringing in live TV and DVR. Um, so you can use a third party USB to aerial connection. I think there is only a couple though you can use at the moment, which you can see a list of devices here. So if we have a quick look, it will basically allow you to use in this country, it would be Freeview. There you go. So that was the only one I kind of found, or that one there. Um, basically, this is the only one I'd be able to use because I'm using it on a NAS and the HD Home Run. And it will basically allow you to use it as a DVR. So I could use Freeview, which is free in this country. I could then use the Synology as a storage medium. So at the moment for my TV, it's delivered by satellite, by a company called Sky, and I have a two terabyte DVR box, which then records it on. But I could then, once I'm settled in a new place, for example, invest into that, and my Synology could then also be my personal DVR for all my TV recordings, which I think I am going to do eventually. So that'll be good when that's there. You do have to have a Plex uh, Plex Pass though, which you do have to pay either monthly, which I pay seven ninety nine for the privilege, or you can pay an upfront cost of I think about one hundred and forty pound off the top of my head. Um, and yeah, that's yours for life. And obviously, then we've got your help. Users, you can set up individual users, but I've just used myself because only me to use it. And then devices, you can see there's loads of different people who use it. My iPhone, iPads, iPhone, living room, Apple TV, Xbox One. There's a vast array of ways you can use Plex. So guys, that is a look at my uh, setup. Uh, it works very well. I, I'm very impressed with it. I, I couldn't tell you why this doesn't work though. <laughs> uh, a bit weird. I might try and see if that's... Uh... I have no idea why that's not working. Um, apart from that, it does work very well. Been very impressed. I've had a couple of times where it's buffered, um, but obviously you've got to remember network traffic in that location as well uh, will also obviously interfere. So if I'm downloading things, because my Synology server can also be used as a download station. So like if I'm downloading torrents, for example, I can just remotely add the torrents in um, and just leave them to it. So, things like that you have to remember as well. Weird. I have no idea why it's not working. Um, so, guys, this has been a look at Plex. If you've got any questions, let me know.